Number 5. The Anguished Man The tale of this rather disturbing looking painting is strange and steeped in mystery, but every scant piece of information we have on it is more unsettling than the last. The painting of a featureless man who seems to be screaming was apparently painted by a deeply troubled artist who mixed his own blood with his paints in an effort to get the right shade of red. Not long after completing it, the artist took his own life, and the painting found its way into a woman's care. She kept it for many years, but claimed that once she put the painting up, her and her family began to see a dark, shadowy figure roaming about their house. At night, they would hear strange sounds like footsteps and crying. The woman took the painting down and kept it locked in her attic for 25 years until she died, leaving the painting to its current caretaker. Sean Robinson. Sean had been warned by his grandmother that the painting was haunted, but he thought little of it. Robinson kept the painting in his basement for about a decade, before rediscovering it and putting it up. Once again, the family began seeing the dark, shadowy figure roaming the halls and hearing the sound of weeping and moaning during the night. Sean began leaving a camera on by the painting to try and get evidence of its paranormal nature, and upon reviewing the footage, heard some odd noises and saw evidence of doors opening and closing, seemingly by themselves, and the painting falling over onto the ground. As time went on, the activity became more and more intense, with his wife seeing a strange mist and an unseen force pushing his son down the stairs. Things went from bad to worse when guests who came to see the painting began reporting intense and sudden nosebleeds. Sean takes the painting out from time to time to show it to paranormal investigators and television programs who want to hear his story but otherwise, the anguished man is apparently kept locked away in a safe location to prevent any further harm from coming to unwitting people. Number 4. Robert the Evil Doll We've all heard of the cursed Annabelle doll that has permeated pop culture for the last decade, but have you heard of Robert? Robert was a gift to a young boy of the same name, Robert Eugene Otto, from his grandfather. The grandfather had been traveling in Germany and came across the doll who was not intended to be a toy, but a window display. He bought the doll for his grandson, who dressed it in a sailor's outfit that he had outgrown and kept it with him at almost all times. As the young boy grew up, witnesses remember his relationship with the doll seemed to grow more and more unhealthy, with him referring to the doll as a living person and blaming mishaps on him. The boy, who went by his middle name, Gene, grew up to be an eccentric artist in a stately home known as the Artist's House. He kept Robert by the upstairs window, where children claimed to see him moving in and out of view. When Jean died in 1974, the new owner of the house, Myrtle Reuter, found the doll and became its new owner. Visitors of the house began reporting the sound of giggling and footsteps coming from the attic where the doll was being kept. When the doll was around people who spoke ill of its original owner, some claim that his facial expression seemed to change. After Myrtle got sick of the doll apparently moving around the home by itself and scaring guests for 20 years, she chose to donate Robert to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Robert now resides in a locked display case to prevent the over 120 year old doll from decaying further, but also to protect the visitors of the museum. But even those precautions don't seem to always work. Guests who insult Robert at the museum report experiencing tragedies in their lives not long after. This has ranged from people losing their jobs, getting divorced, breaking bones, getting into automobile accidents, and even a few deaths. The doll reportedly receives letters every day from admirers, people wanting the doll to curse their enemies, and a few from people asking Robert to reverse the curse they believe he has laid upon them. Number 3. The Women from Lem Statue This limestone statue, also known as the Goddess of Death, was discovered in Lem, Cyprus in 1878. Its purpose, or exactly what it was meant to portray, has been lost to time, but many experts believe it may be a fertility statue of an unknown goddess. Whatever the reason for the carving, experts have concluded that it was carved sometime around 3500 BC. After being found in 1878, it was purchased by a man named Lord Elfont. Within six years of having acquired the object, Elfont and all six of his family members had died under mysterious circumstances. The statue passed to a man named Ivor Manucci, who died along with his entire family within four years of the purchase. The same thing happened to its 
next owner, Lord Thompson Noel, and his family. The statue seemed to disappear for a time before being acquired by Sir Alan Biverbrook, who had a wife, two daughters, and two sons. Yet again, family members began to drop like flies, with Biverbrook, his daughters, and his wife all passing within a few years. Fearing that they would be next, Biverbrook's sons decided to donate the statue to the Royal Museum in Edinburgh, Scotland, where it was soon put on display. However, the statue was not quite done, and the curator who had handled the statue mysteriously died the next year. The statue is still on display to this day, locked in a heavy glass display case. Number 2. Thomas Busby's Chair Our next entry takes us to North Yorkshire in 1702, when two criminals, Daniel Audy and his son-in-law, Thomas Busby, came into conflict. They were coin forgers who essentially ran a criminal empire, but Daniel disapproved of Tom's relationship with his daughter. This resulted in a fight which ended with Daniel's untimely demise. Thomas was arrested soon afterwards and sentenced to be there is some variation in what happened next. Some versions of the tale say that Thomas was arrested at his favorite pub, and others say he was allowed back into the bar for his last drink before his death. Whatever the case, before being taken away, he told the other patrons of the pub, May sudden death come to anyone who dare sit in my chair. He was then taken away and... As the local historian and poet William Grange described it, the bones of the poor wretch who had committed murder to fester in the sunshine and blow in the tempest, until they fell piecemeal to earth, and tradition yet tells tales of night wanderers being terrified when passing the dreaded spot. While Thomas began apparently haunting the spot across from the inn where his remains were displayed, the curse he laid on the chair began taking effect. Over the years, many brave souls sat on the chair to prove they were not afraid and paid the price. In 1894, a chimney sweep sat in the chair and was found the next day hanging next to where where Busby had been displayed. In 1967, two Air Force pilots sat in the chair as a joke, but when they were driving home that night, they crashed into a tree and did not survive. A few years later, a builder sat in the chair and fell off a roof later that same night. Not long after, a cleaner fell into the chair after slipping while mopping the floor and died of a brain tumor soon after. In 1978, the owner of the now renamed Busby Stoop Inn decided that too many deaths had occurred and donated the chair to the Thirst community. Museum. Although they didn't technically lock the chair away, they did hang the chair on the wall, five feet off the ground, to prevent anyone from sitting on it and receiving Busby's fatal curse. Number 1. The Bassano Vase Although it has fallen out of favor now, for centuries a common gift given to brides on the day of their weddings were intricate ornate vases. Our next tale begins in the 15th century Italy and spans over 500 years. Legend says that on the day of her wedding, a bride in a village near Napoli found a gift with no clue which of the guests had given it to her. It was a four pound silver vase. She decided to put it in her room for safekeeping before the wedding ceremony. But when the ceremony was due to start, the bride was nowhere to be found. The groom went to her room to look for her and found her lifeless body on the ground with no trace of what had caused the death other than her desperately clutching the silver vase. The bride was buried and the vase was passed on to one of her family members to be taken care of. Within days, the second member of the family was dead from unknown causes. The vase was given to another member of the family, and when he also passed away, the family made the connection between all the recent tragedies and the Bassano vase. Unsure what to do, they reached out to a local priest who upon hearing the story informed them that whoever had given it to the bride had either cursed it or made it from cursed materials. He advised them to bury it on sacred grounds. They dug a hole and wrote a note, warning, beware. This vase brings death, which they placed inside the cursed vase. The vase was buried and remained underground for the next 500 years. By horrible chance, a man in 1988 was digging and came across the vase. He read the note, but being the skeptical type, discarded it and took the newly found Bassano vase to a local auction house. The vase went up for auction and was sold for the equivalent of $2,270 to the local pharmacist. Within three months, the pharmacist was dead and the vase was sold by his family to a a local doctor, who also passed away soon after. The vase developed a reputation after this, and several people who were approached to purchase it refused, but it was eventually bought by an archaeologist who, despite his family's protests, did not believe in curses. He died three months later. His family threw the vase out their window, but a police officer who was passing by saw this and tried to return it. The family refused the vase back and told him of its cursed nature. He tried to give it to multiple different museums, but having heard about the curse, they all refused. Fearing for 
his life, he did what the bride's family had done over 500 years prior, and buried it in a lead box in a cemetery. Which cemetery he used is unknown, but let us hope that no unwitting soul rediscovers this cursed vase and unleashes it upon humanity once again. Number 5. The Family Jewels Some things get passed on generation to generation, some are begged, some are borrowed, and some are stolen. Our first cursed item has made its way across the many seas at the price of many lives. At a whopping 186 carats, the Koinor diamond may look precious beyond all belief, but this cursed gemstone has a much darker, unbelievable side too. The name derives from the Persian Hindi words Mountain of Light. Many theories exist as to its original owner and who was originally cut for. A Hindu description of the diamond warns that quote, he who owns this diamond will own the world, but will also know all of its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Well, that's jarring to say the least. Right there in writing, huh? Yeah. It passed between the hands of various rulers, blood-soaked era after another, a king who blinded his own son and a ruler whose head had become encrusted with liquid molten gold was paid for this price. Legend has it that the stone's origins of causing death and misfortune to any male who owns or wears it stems from brothers murdering each other to even sons murdering their fathers over it. But does it actually carry a curse affecting men who wear it? First owned by the emperors of the Mughal Empire in India, it was taken and added with the Timur ruby to make an armband for ruler of the Peacock Empire. The diamond then went to Sikh Maharaja Ranjit Singh. After his death, his five-year-old son Dulip Singh, the last Maharaja of the Sikh Empire, would be the last male who ever seemed to wear it. Since being owned by the British royal family, and oddly enough, it's only ever been worn by females. Huh. After Queen Victoria's death, Queen Alexandra got it and was used to crown her at her coronation in 1902. The diamond was then transferred to Queen Mary's crown in 1911 and finally to the Queen Mother's crown in 1937, where it remained for more than 80 years. When Queen Elizabeth died in 2002, the crown was placed on top of her casket for the funeral. All of the crowns are now on display in the Jewel House at the Tower of London, with crystal replicas of the diamonds set in the older models they were in. So what's the deal? Is this thing still cursed? Did the royal family know something that we didn't? Maybe. Number 4. The Statues of Lem The Women of Lem statue was discovered in Lem, Cyprus in 1878 and dates back to about 3500 BCE. The statue eventually earned the nickname the Goddess of Death after four different families experienced tragedy while handling and owning the carved stones. The first owner, Lord Elfont, along with his entire family, perished within six years of owning the statue, all from mysterious and rapid illnesses. The other two owners, Ivor Minucci and Lord Thompson Noel, also died along with their entire family's just a few short years after obtaining the statue within their homes. The fourth owner, Sir Alan Biverbrook, died alongside his wife and two daughters of mysterious causes while in possession of the carved rock. Although his sons did not believe in the curse attached to the statue, out of fear of the sudden misfortunes around them, they decided to gift the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh the find, where it is now encased in glass, safe, unable to bear any other family bad news. You gotta think, someone was just like sitting there back then chiseling this rock like 6,000 years ago. What were they thinking? What were they saying out loud? What were they looking at? Why did they seem to have blessed this rock with so much evil and misfortune? You tell me. Number three, the mummy. Not actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin or lid. The board is painted of an unknown high status woman from the 21st or 22nd dynasty. Time scale for you, that's about a thousand years BCE. The British Museum's unlucky mummy has earned quite the reputation for causing destruction through its ancient curse. The mummy was found at Thebes in Greece in the late 1800s, and tales of its curse started soon after its discovery. It's said that of the four young Englishmen who bought it, two died in a shooting accident and two died of health problems. A string of illnesses, accidents, and deaths following this are said to be attributed to the lid. One of the most infamous rumors about the mummy's curse is that it caused the sinking of the Titanic. Wait a minute, what? One of the victims on board was a journalist who apparently was the first to publish articles about the mummy's find and the curse that went with it. Survivors from the disaster recall hearing stories about the ship of an ominous artifact that has a sinister reputation. As the mummy's stories and the rumors spread, people who survived began to ask the question if the rumors had caused the disaster that night. The unlucky mummy is now an ancient Egyptian artifact in the collection of the British Museum in London. The identity of the original owner is still being studied and the related causes brought on by it. Due to the brief hieroglyphic inscriptions of short religious phrases, scientists are still trying to decide for the name and the curse that comes along with it, and the actual location of where the body disappeared to. It's been feared since the discovery in the late 1880s, and the mummy's lid has acquired a reputation credited with causing death, injury, and large-scale disasters, earning the nickname 
the unlucky mummy. None of these stories have any basis in fact, of course, but the mummy serves as a spiritual question mark and remains a mystery to scientists who crack the code open. Yo, where's Brendan Fraser when you need him, right? He can figure this whole thing out. Number two, the haunted bed. Apparently, there's a bed that makes you more dizzy and have more sinister evil visions than that of a night on a waterbed. Yeah, I've had a couple hungover nights lost at sea, let me tell you. Gets pretty choppy out there. Highly don't recommend it. But this bed, I also highly don't recommend. The lavishly ornate Great Bed of Wear does not like you sleeping in it. The hardwood oak bed is richly decorated and carved with figures and scenes you could daydream for, well, days over. It's so large that it's rumored to comfortably sleep four couples. Yeah. Talk about a California king. There is a tale that suggests that the bed was made in the 15th century for King Edward IV by a very gifted carpenter, but through the years found itself being passed between the inns of wear where commoners were able to sleep in it, break the legs, and apparently cover it head to toe in graffiti. Yeah, the disrespect alone. The defacing got so bad that apparently the ghost of the maker haunts those who are not of royal blood. Basically not blessed by God to rule. It's so old and so haunted that apparently people who spend the night are woken up violently by spectacles watching them sleep. Apparently there are so many initials carved into the wood, images drawn on it, that it's hard to know who actually the bed was originally fitted for, and who actually cursed it. Some researchers believe that the curse surrounding the bed could have actually been carved into it with symbols and text that hexed the next user. Whatever its history, it's haunted haunted. The bed can now be found in the British galleries of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. We need like the Long Island medium to take a nap in it, you know what I mean? See what she thinks. And coming in at the number one spot, the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in 1974 by a group of farmers. Yang Zifa, his five brothers and neighbor were digging a well east of the Quin Emperor's tomb mound at Mount Lee. For centuries, occasional reports mentioned pieces of terracotta figures and fragments of the Quin necropolis. Roofing tiles, bricks, and masonry were regularly found. But when they discovered heads, Chinese archeologists started to investigate. To this day, it remains the largest pottery figure group ever found. The Terracotta Army seemed to be a collection of terracotta sculptures depicting the armies of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. It is a form of funerary art buried with the emperor around 209 BCE with the purpose of protecting the emperor in the afterlife. The figures were discovered in Lingtong County outside Shaanxi, China. The figures vary in height according to their rules and they're all dressed in different garbs, the tallest of course being the generals. These statues include warriors, chariots equipped with horses, more than 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, 520 horses, and 150 cavalry. Other terracotta non-military figures were found in pits close by, including officials, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians. Yo, are we sure that Medusa didn't just like make her way through China and start stoning people in time with her looks? Because that's like an entire city made out of clay. In the records of the Grand Historian, China's 24 dynastic histories, it was written that work on the mausoleum began in 246 BCE, soon after Emperor Quinn ascended the throne. Apparently the project involved 700,000 workers. Yeah, I'd really hope so, because that many perfectly sculpted figures are so realistic, there must have been a city of artists. The site is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has been since 1987. This is scary just looking at it. I'm not convinced this was just an art project for the journey between spirit realms. I think this was used as a decoy for battle. 20,000 figurines just chilling, waiting? Seems pretty intimidating to me. Whatever its origins, it's jarring to look at. What do you think? Number five on this list is Robert the Doll. Robert the Doll is one of the most haunted and cursed dolls on the entire planet. Ghosts and Gravestones says, the story of Robert the Doll dates back to the early 1900s when a young boy named Eugene Robert Otto was given a one-of-a-kind handmade doll by a servant that worked for his parents in his home. Eugene, who everybody called Gene, named the doll Robert and quickly became attached to his new friend. The home where Eugene lived, now called the Artist's House, is located at 534 Eaton Street and was built between 1890 and 1898. It was here that Eugene was given Robert the doll and where a friendship that lasted throughout his lifetime and beyond was forged. While he seemed like an ordinary cloth doll, it wasn't long before Robert was involved in strange and somewhat terrifying events. The first hint that something out of the ordinary was happening was one night when Jean, who was only 10 years old, awoke to find Robert the doll sitting at the end of his bed, 
staring at him. Moments later, his mother was awakened by his screams for help and the sounds of furniture being overturned in her son's bedroom. Jean cried for help, begging his mother to rescue him. When she was finally able to wrench the locked door open, she saw poor Jean curled up in fear on his bed, his room in shambles, and Robert the doll sitting at the foot of the bed. And all the child could say was Robert did it. Now this was the first instance where Robert was acting up, but there have been tons of experiences since then where this doll is just doing things that mm, really shouldn't be doing. He now lives in East Martello where visitors flock to see him. Although, it's a bad idea. There are letters and notes all around Robert from people that have come to see him all begging for Robert's forgiveness. Apparently taking a picture of Robert without his permission will cause him to start to haunt you. This curse has affected hundreds to thousands of people and they all usually end up coming back to Robert begging for freedom from this curse. At this point, paranormal investigators have learned that messing with Robert really isn't the best idea and just leaving this doll alone, probably the smartest thing to do. Number four on this list is the screaming skull. Last I checked, if there is no meat on the bone, then a skull shouldn't be screaming. That's kind of what's going down with this one extremely haunted skull in Burton Agnes Hall, England. Instablog says, what if you touch an object and then you hear terrible deafening screams. That is precisely what happens when you touch this skull at an Elizabethan manor in England. Burton Agnes Hall is the house of Catherine Ann Griffith, who was brutally murdered by numerous bullies in 1620. Her skull still rests inside the house. Why? Because whenever somebody tried to take it out of the house, what happened next terrified them to the bone. People who have tried to touch or disturb that skull have reported seeing a scary ghost walk in and utter a deafening scream. This scared the people so much that they actually ran out of the house in terror. If you're up for a scary challenge, then this might be your chance to prove your mettle to the world, but for the weak hearted ones, it's wise to stay away. And yeah guys, I mean, I agree with that article right there probably best not to mess with this thing. I mean, a bunch of paranormal investigators won't even go here anymore. If a bunch of paranormal investigators think that this area is too scary for them, then sorry guys, I'm tapping out. It's way too scary for me too. Number three on this list is the Maori warrior masks. Now these warrior masks hold a curse that won't affect everyone, just a small portion of people. Specifically, women who are soon to be expecting children. The Occult Museum says New Zealand's Maori warrior warriors are part of an ancient tribe who would carve unique masks when it was time for battle. When a man died in the mask, it was believed that his soul would remain trapped in the mask they were wearing. Although their mythology does not dictate that any harm is done by the trapped souls, the presence of the masks has a strange and sometimes fatal effect on pregnant women. Women who are expecting often experience complications when they come in contact with the masks. It's unknown why this phenomenon occurs, but the museum that holds the remaining masks posts a warning that pregnant women should stay away. The literal museum is out here warning pregnant women not to come. That's how you know that this thing's seriously dangerous. Like whenever a business or enterprise does something that's actually going to lose them money, that's when you have my attention. Considering they just lost an entire demographic of people, I'm now listening and buying into this curse. The paranormal investigators who aren't pregnant have taken a look at this and they're having a hard time getting to the bottom of it. Some people have suggested that the Maori tribe thought that pregnant women were taboo, but that also doesn't really make any sense because then how would they have repopulated their tribe? Regardless of why it is the way that it is, just know that if you are expecting, that's not the right time to take a look at these masks. Number two on this list is the Surrey ghost car. So this is a weird one and definitely something that paranormal investigators are a bit spooked by. List 25 says crashes are common on the 8th three highway in England.
happened. So it looked like a routine matter when police in Surrey received calls that a car had meh, veered off the A3 with its headlights blazing. But when officers went to investigate, they found no signs of the reported vehicle. However, a further search revealed chilling results. Just 60 feet from the reported crash scene and buried in twisted undergrowth was the remains of a wrecked car containing a decomposing body of a young man who, as the police estimated, had crashed there five months earlier. Therefore, what the witnesses reported might have been a ghostly apparition of the original car. Now, how on earth does that make any sense at all? You know what, let me answer that for you. It doesn't. First off, how did no one notice this car earlier? And then, what was that ghostly apparition that had a car veer off the road? Paranormal investigators are all scared of this one because who knows what type of effect this ghost car could have on your vehicle. And finally, number one on this list is the cursed mirror. This mirror isn't just cursed with a bad reflection, it's gonna show you something a lot worse than just you with a little bedhead or something. Instablog says, if you've seen Oculus, then chances are already you're scared of mirrors. And let's not even go back to the time when Bloody Mary was a whole thing. But if these creepy images of mirrors in the horror genre weren't enough, here's a real object which is most likely cursed. In St. Francisville, Louisiana, there's a plantation house which is one of the most haunted houses in America. Inside the house is this mirror, a cursed mirror. Legend goes that the plantation slave brutally killed the owner of the house named Sarah Woodruff and her daughters inside the house. Ever since then, they remain trapped inside the mirror. Visitors often report sights of handprints on the mirror along with some unexplainable strange marks. And the classic haunting is also rumored, figures dressed in white, old fashioned attire visible on the other side of the mirror. Some people who have been exposed to this mirror for longer than they should say that these figures in white follow them around too. That they've even seen them appear in other mirrors outside of the plantation and one or two of them have talked about how they've seen them outside of a mirror entirely as if they were standing like right in front of them. It seems like the longer that you're exposed to this, the more of an impact the curse will have on you. Kind of like, I don't know, radiation poisoning or something like that, where the time you spend among the toxin, that's gonna hurt you more. Obviously, because of this, paranormal investigators don't wanna spend too long investigating this mirror. A short stint doing some research probably won't hurt you, although it will definitely give you a scare considering you're gonna see the figures on the other side. But extended exposure is where the real danger lies with this cursed item. Number five on this list is the die book box. This is an evil box that tormented many people and even claimed some lives along the way. Zach Baggins writes, According to Jewish folklore, a diabok is a dark spirit that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. Legend has it that a diabok can be trapped inside of a box and prevented from causing mischief unless the box is opened, that is. Several years ago, the diabok box came up for sale on eBay. The seller listed a vintage wine cabinet that came from the estate of a woman who survived a world war or two concentration camp. The seller and antique dealer named Kevin Manis claimed that the first owner's granddaughter was terrified of the box, warning him that her grandmother said it held a diabook. After buying the cabinet, he was plagued by a series of unfortunate events and recurring nightmares of an old hag that would brutally attack him, causing him to wake up with bruises on his body. He also experienced an overpowering stench of cat urine in his home. Tragically, his mother suffered a stroke while opening the box. Not surprisingly, he decided to get rid of it. The box eventually ended up in the hands of Missouri Medical Museum director Jason Haxton, who was skeptical about the powers attributed to the box. He soon changed his mind. After acquiring the box, he began to experience a series of medical maladies, including bleeding eyes and strange rashes. He also began to dream of being attacked by an old hag and would also awake with bruises on his body. Kevin Manis told me that while the 
box was at Haxton's basement, a man died there and his body was found lying next to the box. He eventually became so unnerved by the box that he reached out to scientists and rabbis who instructed him to build a wooden ark lined with 24 karat gold, place the box inside, and bury it in the ground. Now this actually wasn't the end of the story for this box. The box was eventually dug up again and then later donated to a museum. This was after it had tormented a few more people mind you though. Now it's fully encased in a glass covering but even that doesn't stop the evil spirit from coming after people. Many people who have visited this box have reported having serious episodes in the room while they are looking at it. Whatever spirit is trapped inside this box, it is clearly an extremely powerful one. The box remains on display at the museum but I wouldn't recommend going to check it out if I was you. Number 4 on this list is the Devil's Rocking Chair. The Devil's Rocking Chair is actually from one of Ed and Lorraine Warren's most famous case, The Devil Made Me Do It. Zach Baggins writes, The horror began in July 1980 when David Glatzel, 11 years old, became possessed by a demon. One night he woke up screaming, claiming that he had been visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, jagged teeth, pointed ears, horns, and hooves. David was, everyone agreed, not the kind of kid who liked scary movies or who was likely to make things up and he was visibly shaken up by this experience. He became rather withdrawn and quiet. His older sister, Debbie, asked her fiance, Orrin Johnson, if he would stay with her family for a while and see whether it would help David get out of his depression. Orrin of course agreed, but things didn't get better. David reported having more nightmares about the terrifying man who promised to take his soul. Odd scratches and bruises began to appear on the boy and all the injuries seemed to happen while he was asleep. Odd sounds, which Arn couldn't explain, were heard in the attic. Worst of all, David began to claim that he was now seeing the beast while he was awake. He was always seen sitting in the family's rocking chair, which the beast now claimed as his own. David was the only one who saw the beast in the chair, but family members often saw it rocking back and forth, seemingly under its own power. This was obviously a lot, so the Warrens were brought in to perform the exorcism. The exorcism took place in that rocking chair, and it's thought that the chair itself still has some evil energy from this spirit attached to it. Now the chair resides at the haunted museum, but owner Zach Beggins actually took the exhibit down because the chair was simply too dangerous, he thought. Number three on this list is the Hope Diamond. Don't get me wrong, guys, I would love to have this thing, but I just don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze here. Google Arts and Culture says one of the most famous diamonds in the world, the Hope Diamond, originated in the Kular mine in Andhra Pradesh, India. According to legend the stone is cursed and brings misfortune to anyone who owns it. The curse is said to have come about when the original diamond was stolen from the eye of a statue. The thief met a grisly end, kick-starting a pattern of misfortune for all those who possessed the diamond. Over the years, owners of the Hope Diamond have befallen fates including death by murder, execution, they've taken their own lives, bankruptcy, and imprisonment. Thankfully, the curse seems to have been lifted when the diamond was donated to the Smithsonian in 1958. Now I don't really buy into the fact that this curse is lifted in my opinion. Like literally if you own this diamond then you die or someone you love dies. That's what's happened throughout history. In the best possible case scenario you just get hit with like horrible luck and lose all your money or some other horrible thing. There just really isn't any good way to spin this. Owning the Hope Diamond is pretty much a horrible idea. Number two on this list is the Unlucky Mummy. Do not get on a boat if said boat is also carrying this mummy. Google Arts and Culture says the unlucky mummy isn't actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin lid of a high status woman who lived in around 950 to 900 BCE. Discovered in Thebes in the 1800s, the four young Englishmen who first purchased the mummy all died in unfortunate circumstances. Rumors of the curse soon spread and in the early 20th century, journalist William Thomas Steed wrote an article on the jinxed artifact. Steed went on to be one of the passengers on the doomed Titanic. It's said that he told stories of the curse in the run up to the disaster, with many believing that the mummy itself caused the ship's watery end. Today, the unlucky mummy is on display in the British Museum. The Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. Enter in the unlucky mummy and boom, now the unsinkable ship goes down. Maybe it's a stretch to say that this thing caused the literal Titanic crash, but I can at least guarantee that it 
probably didn't help. At least this thing is now locked up in a museum very much on land and not connected to any boats that I know of. And number one on this list is the Hands Resist Him painting. I'm all about having some cool groundbreaking art, but this painting definitely crosses the line. The lineup says there is no doubt the painting is disturbing. It shows a young boy standing next to a girl doll with hollow eyes and a sad downturned mouth. The doll is holding a strange device with wires coming out of it. The eeriest part of the painting are the many disembodied children's hands reaching toward the boy through the glass panels of a door just behind him. But even more disturbing than the painting itself are the stories of what has happened to people who come in contact with it. A few years after the painting was sold, the art critic Henry Seldes died. Then the gallery owner died. Then in 1984, John Marley died. The painting disappeared, not surfacing again until 2000 in a bizarre posting on eBay. The new owners were trying to sell it because they said it was haunted. They claimed the boy and the doll in the picture would fight with each other during the night, terrifying their four-year-old daughter. They set up a motion sensing camera in the room for three nights and claimed they had captured the boy in the picture, leaving the frame and coming into the room, apparently fleeing in terror. The literal kid in the painting is leaving. Not freaking cool, guys. My paintings are supposed to be static and not moving, and they definitely aren't supposed to be walking around my home scaring the living bejesus out of me and my family. Apparently, this painting is locked up in a storage locker now, and no one is allowed to see it. <laughs> 